Hey, good morning, Calvary family, and to all of those of you who have chosen to take the time to connect with us online today with our words of the day. I hope your year 2022 is off to a great start and that you're enjoying time with your family and your friends and that you have not fallen into that trap of the 75% who made resolutions and have already broken them. Hopefully you're part of that 25% that are continuing to go. Today, I'd like to share a bit of my story of bondage to freedom, my story from bondage to freedom. You see, I grew up attending church, fifth row from the back, inner city church, large, large First Baptist Church, Albany, Georgia. Like most church kids, every time that we had revival services or vacation Bible school or, or anything that would have a strong evangelical uh, approach to it, I'd be the one raising my hand and I got saved so many times. And, and I don't say that as a, as a funny thing. I just say that I accepted what I knew about Jesus at that time at the age that I was at that time. However, I realized when I was 16 years of age that I had a lot of head knowledge about Jesus, but not that heart knowledge that needed to happen. And so I got down on my knees and, and I prayed and I invited Jesus Christ to become my personal Lord and Savior when I was 16 years of age. And that really started a journey for me of following Christ and becoming more Christ-like. Now, fast forward, because I, I came from a, a saving grace and knowledge of Christ at a young age, I learned more about sin after I became a Christian than I did before I was a Christian. And, and I reflect on my life and realize that Chet had weaknesses. Now, I know that that's not easy for everyone to admit, but I've learned it's a whole lot easier for me to admit what my weaknesses were. And each time there was a traumatic change in my life, I turned to alcohol to escape. Now, I'm not a drinker and I don't like the taste of alcohol, but I did grow up in an alcoholic household. And so therefore, it was easy for me to just numb the pain. Now, it didn't really didn't last long. And so each time there was a traumatic change, that's what I did. When I was 18 years of age, I moved out of the house. Born again, stupid period is what I call it. My mother was washing my clothes and cooking my meals. I didn't have to pay rent. The house was clean. All I had to do was go to school and go to my job. But I thought I could do better. So at 18, I moved out of the house. And for about a year, I wondered. Now, I never wandered away from church. However, I always was fifth row in the back at that same church, getting involved, hearing that, being convicted that what I was doing was wrong. And then I'd turn a curve. The next traumatic thing that happened in my life was that when I was uh, 30 years of age, unbeknownst to me, the wife that I was married to at that time for eight years decided she no longer wanted to be married. And so I got served divorce papers. And in the state of Georgia, 30 days later, we were no longer married. I thought I could work back and earn her trust, earn her love, earn her kindness, because I really didn't know other than just being stupid uh, as to what I could do to win her back. That did not happen. However, and so I kind of spiraled again and remember the old fallback. Let's just numb it for a while. Well, that lasted for about a year as well. Apparently, it takes me about a year to learn most lessons. And then, as some of you have heard me reference in other uh, sermons that I have given, I was approaching the age of 40. Now, guys, can I just go ahead and tell you, sometimes your body does crazy things hormonally, psychologically. And I was fighting a battle. I was working in the corporate world. I was working hard, trying to provide for my family. And I just got to the I don't care stage. And that's a dangerous place to be. And so I really spiraled, honestly, for about three years. Psychologically, I didn't care. And that's a dangerous place to be, especially as a follower of Jesus Christ. When you get in a position where you just don't care, that's tough. Well, that lasted for quite a while. And here's the catch. Um, the fall uh, of my 40th year, I decided to um, really abuse alcohol. And in six weeks, I got two DUIs. I remember the second one. Um, they put me in the jail in my mom's hometown. 
And when my mother came to pick me up the next morning, she looked at me and she gave me that look that moms can give. And she said these words that I'll never forget. She goes, I don't know what's wrong with you, son. Don't know why you waited to be 40 years old to get stupid. But whatever is wrong, you need to get some help. Well, fortunately, in the church that we attended, there was a young lady by the name of Dr. Cheryl Gratton. And every Tuesday morning at 8 o'clock for three years, I sat in front of Dr. Cheryl Gratton and we talked. Basically for about the first year, just complaining about life. Then I started to realize that I had tools that God had given me that I should be using. After the third year, going into the third year, I began to see the light and came out of that. My wife totally loved me through all of that. Um, we challenged one another just to not let things go unsaid that we would share. And so finally God had me exactly where he wanted me. You see, during that process, I had embarrassed my wife, my mother, and myself. And I remember, as I said, that day when mom picked me up. And I never wanted to see that happen again. And that's when I started the journey from bondage to freedom by meeting, as I said, eight o'clock for three years with a Christian counselor who helped me understand my relationship with Christ, who helped me discover tools that God had given me, how I could cope with life. None of them, by the way, involved alcohol. I've been sober for over 20 years and because I've allowed the Holy Spirit of God to deliver me from my pain of life, some of you may be struggling. And you may have an addiction saying, I'm not hurting anyone but myself, but can I assure you that's not true? That's a lie from the pit of hell. You see, get honest with yourself and share the pain with people who love you and who will love you through your dysfunction, but they'll not allow you to remain in that dysfunction. Bondage to freedom. You see, sin has no hold on Chet, and God can deliver you the same way. Get the help that's available. By the way, one of the best ways to get some help is Monday nights at 6.30 at our Sweetwater campus. It's called Celebrate Recovery. Every one of us have a hurt habit or a hang up. I gave you the shortened version of what Chet went through for almost 40 years. I don't want to see you have to go through that same pain. So can I just encourage you to reach out and get the help that you need? Will you join me in prayer? Father, thanks. Thanks that you love us through our dysfunction. Father, you um, allowed your son Jesus to, to die for us and that while we were yet in that desperate sinful stage, Father, you didn't hold any of that against us. You applied the grace and the love that only can come from you. And Father, you surrounded me with a family that loves me unconditionally. And Father, you gave me an opportunity for the last 18 years to serve here at Calvary Thank you, Jesus, that you've allowed me to share my story today. Hopefully you'll use it to lead others to a life-changing relationship with you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. God bless you and hope you have a great week. See you this weekend.